So we've all been there before, we've had a bent wheel, or maybe we went to a wheel and tire shop to have our wheels rebalanced, or maybe we're bringing them a new set of wheels, and one of the wheels comes up and they say, hey, your wheel is out of round. What does that mean? And what does that mean for the wheel? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> so we all know that out of round essentially means that the wheel is bent in some fashion. Some are worse than others. Some can be still usable and other ones can't. There could be a few different things, especially if you're getting a set mounted for the first time. And the reason is because sometimes out of round, while it seems simple, isn't properly diagnosed. So we're gonna show you how to properly diagnose that. And in addition to that, we're gonna be using simple tools here. We're gonna be using this wheel balancer just because it's perfectly centric and it's easy for us because we have one here. Uh, but you don't have to use a wheel balancer. At home, you can put your vehicle up in a jack stand and you can use a simple dial indicator like we have here. We have two of them. Um, and essentially these dial indicators will allow us to be able to figure out if the wheel is actually at a round and where it is at a round. And that can determine whether we're gonna be able to use this wheel again, or we're gonna have to kind of go back to the drawing board and get another one. If you have ever seen a wheel and tire get mounted, sometimes you will see the visual appearance when a tire is on a wheel and it's on a balancer, that it looks like it has a slight wobble to it. Now, there could be a lot of reasons visually that it's appearing that way. It could be the tire being off, it could be some machining on the wheel, but does that mean the wheel is at a round? And that's interesting because the answer to that is no. We're gonna show you how to properly figure out if the wheel's at a round, but when you see these types of things, the important thing to understand is that out of round conditions are measured at the bead, where the tire actually rides. So, you know, you may have a flange that's a little wonky, you may have uh, some machining that's going on on one of your wheels, you may go to get a rebalance, and when they put your OE wheel onto the machine, they're like, hey, do you see this play? You need a new wheel. It may not be entirely true. All right, so when it comes down to the tools that you're actually gonna need, this is really the most basic one that you will need. And, and this is a pretty cheap, very simple dial indicator that you would get. You can even get one from Amazon. And this is a magnetic base. And the reason this becomes important is because most likely where you're gonna to wanna to attach this to a fixed point is gonna be metal and it's gonna be heavy. So uh, these things help quite a bit. Uh, we'll put this on the wheel balancer and this will allow us to be able to adjust the dial indicator to the flange of the wheel. And this will allow us to be able to measure that flange as we're moving the wheel. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to get that queued up. All right, so when it comes down to this wheel, there's a couple areas we wanna check. But again, like I said to you before, when we look for a wheel that's technically out of round, we're more concerned where the tire is traveling. And that means that this is the bead seat where the tire would sit. We're concerned about this flange and we're concerned about this flange because this area is where the bead is gonna sit and this will have the most pronounced effect on how your wheel is actually gonna ride and where you feel that vibration. So that's what we're checking and that's what everybody should be concerned with. So if you're looking at something out here, it may not end up being a, a problem because really when you're concerned about an out around condition, you're looking at the area where the tire is traveling. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially queue up uh, dial indicators. We're gonna use two at one time just to speed up some things here. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this dial indicator to this inner flange. Now, this wheel happens to have a knurled bead seat to prevent tire slippage on high torque applications. All right, so we set this dial indicator up here right on the uh, edge of the bead seat. We're not obviously conflicting with uh, the knurled bead seat. That would give us a kind of a fake read. So when it comes down to what you're actually looking for with the difference between the high and the low, just understand that an OE tolerance uh, on a lot of wheels, I think Lotus is even like 0.8 millimeters. Uh, and that's actually quite a lot. And you could translate that into thousands as well. But basically that spread is what we're trying to be within, right? There's an acceptable tolerance. Now, I think that's a little bit large. Most aftermarket wheels are gonna use about a half a millimeter. Uh, and in that whole thing, uh, really, as long as you're below half a millimeter, uh, you're okay. Now, we're using two dial indicators at one time. You don't have to, you can just reposition one. But essentially what we're doing is we're checking the inner bead seat here and we're gonna be checking the inner flange here. Again, this is where the tire is gonna sit. This is the stuff that we're the most concerned with when we're looking for a wheel that may be out of round, right? Uh, you don't have to get it perfectly all the way at the edge. What you're gonna do is kind of adjust it so that it's making a solid contact for the entire rotation of the wheel. And then we can go ahead and just adjust this back to zero so we know uh, kind of that's our starting point. Now you could do two things. The first thing is, remember, we're working with the difference between the high and the low. So you don't really have to go in and zero it out. If you want, you can find the low spot and put the gauge at zero. And that way you kind of don't have to do the math, but that's the only difference, right? So if you're at home, you're essentially gonna be able to take a dial indicator like this, 
find a part of the car that's obviously not moving or come up with something heavy that's metal right in front. Now, obviously you're gonna say, well, I have a tire on mine. Understand, you can't really check it like that. So if you happen to have a tire on it, this is where a wheel and tire shop will be of great use because they'll be able to dismount the wheel. Um, but again, if you are in a point where you're having an issue and you're already at a tire shop and they're showing you a wheel that's mounted uh, you know, with a tire on it and they're showing you, hey, look, look, it's wobbling, the wheel's no good. That's a classic thing to be able to say, hey, if the wheel's already junk, please dismount the tire and they should be able to do that measurement inner uh, and outer on both beat seats. So here and here and then here and here. And that will give you an accurate indication. If you're, again, if you're about uh, half a millimeter or under, you're okay. And it doesn't matter kind of what's looking like out here. It has everything to do with where the tire is sitting. And it's up to you to use your discretion if you just feel that you don't want to run with it, you want to get something different. Just understand that there is an actual definition for at around and this is how you would find it. So we're going to show you a few different things and kind of how out around could look look and kind of how you could figure out exactly what the cause might have been. They don't know why it has a little bit of a hop to it. And, um, and ultimately what we see is this, right? So it's not a big mark, but it was just enough. If this was dropped on pure concrete where there's no cushion of a tire or anything like that, you know, that's a really sharp ding. So now again, we're using about a half a millimeter to see if there's tolerance. Now, this is a spot we've already pre-measured. This marks out at 0.49 millimeters, right? And that kind of brings us right to the edge of tolerance uh, of that half millimeter. So the reason we're seeing it here is because if this spot is dropped harshly here, then the wheel naturally wants to squeeze out, right? And that's what happens. It squeezes out here as it kind of just starts to deform. Now, again, this wheel may not be bad, but how are we gonna check it is very, very simple. We're gonna put a dial indicator on this bead seat we're gonna just go ahead and zero this dial indicator out the best we can, right? See, we get it close. Again, we're looking for the difference, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. But you could see like the big change happens right there, right? So let's let's go ahead and re-zero this thing out. We're gonna see the full move. Again, when we convert millimeters, that half millimeter to thousandths, 20 thousandths is the limit. And you can see we kind of just approach it right in this area. We're about 18 there. We watch this thing kind of swing a little bit back and forth. We're okay. Sharp moves from here, right? And then we're going right back to there. And, uh, you know, and that's one of those things, you know, you could see where that, that wheel has now deformed uh, and we're able to check it on this bead seat. Now in the same uh, kind of light, we're also gonna check this interior bead seat because again, we would check four different bead seats. We're gonna check here where the tire rides on both sides. We're gonna check the inner flange here. We're worried about where the contact uh, is made of the tire. So wherever the tire makes contact, that's what we're concerned of. That's how we measure if a wheel is out of round in any circumstance. If you have a bend, if there's a bend that happens because you have hit a pothole or something like that, you will see a very pronounced bend in that area. And, um, you know, a lot of times people will say, I don't, I didn't hit anything. Well, remember that metal is kind of has this thing work hardening. So if you bend it once here and then you hit this thing repeatedly over the course of multiple times, you're going to start to see that edge deform a little bit more each single time and kind of impacts that significant portion of the wheel. Um, especially if they're hard hits, uh, using stretched tires, not having proper air pressure, all these things could kind of do that same thing. So just kind of being informative, let's go ahead and just set this dial indicator up for the interior bead as well. Then again, this is probably not going to show a ton and the digital ones are not really as good as I would like, but let's go ahead and kind of show you what that would look like. We're looking for the difference. So we saw a negative 2000. So now we're going as high as 70. You're just gonna go slow. It's not a speed game. It's just kind of an accuracy game. We're looking for the highs and the low. So we got about negative two and a half thousands there. And we go to about seven thousands there. So again, we're, we're within spec um, on the interior bead here, but um, what we're looking for here is just the total and we can see where the where the complaint came in about you know that there's a hop 
Well, it makes sense because we look at this as going to be, uh, you know, the absolute low point. And we can see the high point happens very quickly. See how quickly that happens? So we're seeing the deformed part drop down here and it kind of squeezes out here. You can see it's going negative here. And that's why when we start to come up this way. So that's what happens. You kind of get this, this reaction. Now, what does that look like when you set it on a balancer? All right, so I'm gonna spin this wheel so you can kind of see a visual of what we're talking about with that little hop. But if you could see right here where, where you hit that, where you see that low spot, then it's counteracted right by that high spot. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a little bit of hop there. Now, look, look at the front lip here. You can actually see that that isn't present on the front, right? Like that's, that's just the deal. This one's nice and straight. Right. So that's kind of how we're able to check if a wheel is out of round. And this would be a good example if a wheel was dropped, let's say on concrete, if it had shipping damage. And that's most likely what happened with this wheel. We could see this little chunk out here. There's a good hard thing. You know, maybe they threw it into the corner of the truck or, or, or something like that and it's just enough to catch it just where all the weight of the throw kind of went onto this angle. And again, would this wheel balance out and be totally fine under, you know, use? Absolutely. But again, somebody gets this brand new, we don't want them to have it. So that might be something that we would go ahead and, uh, you know, swap out. But what happens when you get this as a customer? What happens when you get this as a retailer? Most likely we're going to tell you to put a shipping claim in because this wheel obviously was not like that before it left, and now it is like that. So you know, that's how it looks if you have shipping damage. All right, so now let me show you a wheel that has been significantly impacted. This either came from some sort of uh, major impact, like a pothole, or it would have been something that on a racetrack where you know it's being curb checked repeatedly. Uh, we can see that there's a very pronounced bend here. All right, so first thing is, let's look at the tolerance with the dial indicator. So we can look at this wheel and the movement is significant, right? We're in thousands here. So we're seeing about 47 thousandths. I mean, that's a major, major move, right? We can see this wheel has a significant bend. And what you might see like this when they look at visually, now visually, if we were to rotate this, you see this on the balancer, you could see that there's a pronounced wobble on that barrel, right? So this is what a wheel might look like if you have experienced this uh, pothole, maybe go to a shop, they dismount the tire, go to swap tire over, or you're experiencing vibration and they say, hey, your wheel's got a bend in it. This is what it would look like. All right, so we hope that you learned a little something today. This will tell you how to figure out exactly if your wheel is out of round and you can do it at home if you choose to do so, so that you don't have to worry about anybody telling you one thing or another or not giving you the time of day, which technically with car people seems to happen more than not. So thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one.